dear friends in Jesus. As a good Christian, I have always attempted to bring my son, Gilbert Jr., to know and fear the Lord. I've done everything a good Christian father should do. Read the Bible to him every night, said grace before every meal, forced him to attend church at least once a week, etc. Up until now, Gilbert Jr. has been a good, obedient boy. I have instilled in him a healthy ad ad adjunct uh, terror of suffering and eternity of hellfire that has kept him on the straight and narrow and prevented his, his thoughts and his hands from wet wandering down. Um, and he says, however, Gilbert Jr. has been recently started coming home from school, spouting all sorts of irreligious nonsense. Apparently, they have been studying so-called other religions in school and filling the impressionable head of all sorts of, uh, of different things. He came home one last week and said uh, um, to ask me why so many religions around the world and how can they be sure that your religion is the one true religion? What about Muslims? What about Sikhs? And what about Buddhists? What if they also basically um, I think Gilbert is just trying to find a question, an answer to his son's question there about the other religions and why is Christianity and our belief in Jesus Christ so important, Grady? What would you say? Well, first of all, it's fine to study other religions because how do you know which one is true? You study and you see the others are counterfeits. Um, however, uh, there can only be one true religion, period, and all the rest cannot be. So when you study these, what you need to take a look at are, in fact, uh, the fallacies, the errors, etc., cetera, um, and the claims. So Christianity is the religion that talks about Jesus as the Son of God who dies and is resurrected for our sins, to pay for our sins that we cannot pay for ourselves. And what you want to take a look at is the claims of each religion. Now, for instance, I have an article on my website about one particular religion, and I showed that scientifically it is a false religion. Why? Because the scientific statements made by their documents are false. Now, if, if they were written by the God who had done these things, he would know what was right and what was wrong, and he would have put in there what was right. Uh, but if there's misstatements uh, of science, and of course that comes from my background, um, then the religion itself has to be false too. And there are only three religions that start with a claim of creation, and all three do that because all three start with the first 11 chapters of Genesis. Mm. Every other religion in the world starts in an evolutionary belief. Well, evolution is a false concept, easily disproven scientifically. So you can eliminate all those right there. And then you take a look at the three that start with creation. And you have to then take a look at them in depth and take a look at the claims, which is all right. You need to know the counterfeit. But when you do that, then the one true religion shines out. And that would be Christianity. Wow, that's powerful. Thank you so much, Grady, for sharing that. Amen to that. I really encourage our viewers, check out our video on demand and watch this program again because <laughs> there is so much important information Dr. Grady is sharing with us tonight as well. And it's wonderful tools because I know you sometimes are challenged by your friends and your families as well of talking about Christianity and religion and Jesus Christ and such things. So these are wonderful tools for you to be able to use and evangelize and spread the good news of Jesus Christ out there as well. So thank you, Grady.